Hi, that's the first tutorial about how to use uh, the blending material we are uh, giving you. Uh, first thing, we want to talk about the uh, the micro tiling. Uh, as you can see, we have a lot of parameters here, global parameters and local parameters for each material. We will get to that later. Uh, first of all, I want to talk to micro tiling because it's uh, uh, it's the more complicated one and take uh, sometimes it causes the, the shader to recompile so I want to get rid of it first uh, as you can see we have uh, this weird color uh, that I choose from here you can actually change that color as much as you want uh, it basically helps with uh, not giving you the feeling that the, the texture is not tiling enough you know uh, it hides the repetition uh, the repetition in the material so basically you can just you know if you don't need it you can simply uh, close it like that and if you need it and you found out that your texture is tiling a lot so it can help to hide some of the tiles and to give you the feeling or makes it a little bit harder uh, to see the repetition uh, anyway uh, you can uh, of course change the color up to the texture you are going to use uh, so it's really simple and really useful sometimes uh, anyway I will uh, I will just close it now and start talking about the other parameters uh, of course we have the uh, global roughness okay which uh, which won't appear in this uh, shader because uh, in this texture or that special layer because it's um, it's muddy uh, but it will work on other stuff uh, on other layers that we are going to use here anyway uh, that's for global roughness and we have global tessellation which as you can see it controls the entire shader tessellation and we are going to reduce that or actually make it one and uh, the uh, global ambient occlusion uh, well that won't take any effect unless uh, the landscape or, uh, or whatever you are using this material on uh, is lit by uh, indirect lightning uh, it's an engine thing it's not the uh, it's not the shader's fault so uh, what can we do about it <laughs> specular uh, as you can see it's a specular global specular control uh, you can see at the you know at the edge over there you can see that specular is increasing and reducing but that's also a global thing uh, actually if we kind of you know reduce that and the roughness maybe yes uh, if we increase the roughness we can start seeing it but of course this is unrealistic so we gotta stick with one and one for now and uh, macro tiling we already talked about that and the tessellation quality is how uh, okay let's go to wireframe mode okay I'm not sure if you can see that but uh, if you are going to use like uh, one you can see that uh, the solution quality actually sort of increased the uh, number of polygons and triangle triangles that it's going to be used to make the tessellation work better uh, which is good so you can actually close it with zero or one uh, sometimes uh, you know 2048 uh, will increase a lot which we don't really need it's, it's really costly so we're gonna keep it at one and uh, texture tiling of course let's go back to lit mode and texture tiling you can tile it uh, as many as you want uh, as you can see well that's super tiling right and repetitive let's just uh, check our micro tiling thing let's see if it will help see it actually you know made it really hard to notice that the texture is tiling which is really useful and good and of course you can change the color as, as you want so yeah uh, that's about uh, that uh, let's keep it open for now uh, now we have this ice layer which is nice if you are going to make uh, a snow landscape let's try to use it here you see it's really nice just one click you know and you have that and you can see the blending here it actually you know goes from wet to super super reflective uh, like you know ice and uh, you can actually use this uh, ice later uh, ice layer around it maybe if to give it more sense and just go do some random stuff al around it maybe let's increase the uh, the strength here 
okay now we have uh, sort of uh, ice then snow okay and do you see the blending hey uh, actually uh, it's real nice you know uh, and now we can try the other uh, layers here you know let's blend it like that you can see here it blends really nicely and actually if you use the uh, target uh, use target and let's say about that it will just target this amount and as much as you increase it it will give it more and you know if you reduce it it will use less of the material you are controlling <laughs> okay and we can try other stuff as well let's close that and blend more blend more it's really easy to use and just blend and depends on uh, how good you are in painting okay uh, as you can see it's really tiling in here um, at this close range actually nobody use 4x tiling so yeah let's get reasonable here and uh, that's actually the basic thing about the material let's go to the fun stuff uh, for each material you have its own controllers uh, as, I as I said before ambient inclusion won't work unless it's lit by indirect light uh, okay now we have uh, material number one and we have something called material subsurface color okay now if you have you know multiple snow textures that you are going to, to use a snow texture and material number one and two and three and four you like snow okay and you want to use uh, subsurface in each one of them and you want to let some you know light and brightness go through each of your materials and uh, as you can see here okay if it was black I added this actually I just added this you know light uh, point light here okay and if you just turn it a bit to white you can see it actually more and uh, letting a lot of light go through so if you have the uh, sunlight or whatever it will look much better if you have the subsurface scatter op uh, on uh, on and uh, close to white as you can see if it's black you know it's hardly noticeable that it's receiving any white and even if you use snow so making it black it will actually help to mo to make your uh, snow layer look better okay i actually rather to use it uh, with the snow and if you don't like it you can just ignore it just keep it at black it won't affect you at all and let's close it like here and the same goes for all materials now if you have uh, what do you need to actually use it uh, the text the texture instances as you can see we have diffused normals so where would you put uh, depths and I mean occlusion and roughness let's uh, use substance for that okay once we open substance we have to make a new substance relative to parent and you know doesn't matter nothing nothing that really matters anyway so let's use an empty one okay and we are going to uh, import our textures and what we need here is the depth and ambient occlusion and roughness uh, we drag them to the substance designer and yes click OK thank you and actually we are missing a map here uh, what do we have here EO and devs actually we are missing uh, the roughness okay <coughs> now we have these three uh, maps and we need to use them as a merged texture if you read what I wrote here uh, material R for roughness red channel for roughness blue channel for depths uh, alpha channel for ambient occlusion so we are that's where what we are going to do we are going to press space, merge, uh, RGB merge, not sure which one of them, actually, no, not this one, merge, yep, that's the one we want. We said roughness in the red channel, AO in alpha, and depth in blue. Okay, now we have the merged channel that we want, uh, it should look like that and uh, how to import that we simply need to you know let's grab what oh, well we made it empty okay we need to add an output like that and uh, doesn't really matter what this output should be so we are going to click this gear uh, icon up there and export outputs yep that's output number one and i'm going to save it 
and select folder and once you select the folder you just click save it will take some time to save because uh, I'm using a uh, 4k texture merging them together so yeah it's going to take some time and we are we are waiting <coughs> okay once it, well, once it's done what we need to do is actually to import these textures so uh, what we are going to do is let's say color I'm going to rename them normal and uh, merged layers merge okay now we have the merge the normal and color we have all these three now and we are going to import them drag and drop from the folder two, 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 two. once we imported them uh, what we want to do is to double click on the merged layer okay now we need to uncheck the srgb to have the true colors of our merged layers Mm, this will take some time okay once this happened you can see that uh, now we have the true colors of our uh, merged layer uh, if we close all them that's the red that's our roughness that's our depths and that's our ambient occlusion so now we know that our material is working fine but now we save them or it for now <coughs> now we go back to uh, our material editor uh, in the uh, you know uh, the instance uh, we are what we are going to do is to check all these three now we I'm using the material one I'm going to change material one material one is this this rocky greenish grassy thing and uh, we are going to drag and drop the merge drag and drop the normal where is the color and drag and drop the color now we turn it up to a sort of uh, desert uh, material, okay? And it will just apply normally, like the other one. You don't you don't have to do anything, okay? Y y you can increase its height as much as you want, okay? And it will react normally as if it was the old one, okay? And ambient occlusion that needs the light to be uh, to be indirect roughness and everything locally will work just fine you can use whatever material you want you can actually make a sort of snow desert and so basically yes um, to blend or to use the ice mm, more correctly it has to be surrounded by you know the snow uh, otherwise it will be you know sort of blocky you can see blocks uh, on the material here but if you are using the snow it will look much better because the snow blends better with the ice material because the both of them are different in their construction and the uh, the four materials up there uh, had their own different way so let me show you basically what we have here that's the whole material shader here uh, we have the snow uh, it has its own different shader as you can see it's different than the material number four and three and two and one one and two and three and four have the same basic uh, structure but the snow and the ice here and the ice actually is from another it's in another material i just grabbed the uh, layer info and i will tell you how it looks Oops. okay that's how the ice looks and i uh, drag the output from here and put it in the main material you know to save some space I don't like it to be you know a mess it's already a mess so yeah that helps a little and that's basically it uh, that's what you need to know about this material you can use as I said before whatever textures you want doesn't really matter and you have to use it uh, merged as we showed in substance uh, so yeah one you can control everything globally you have a micro tile macro tiling uh, you have a layer uh, you have uh, parameters for ice you have parameters for each material one two three and four and you have uh, a special parameters for snow and different stuff you now I and I've told you how to make a measured texture and how to use them in diffuse normals and all that uh, that's basically it 
uh, enjoy. See ya.